Hi, I'm Mark Kushner, Citizen Science Officer in NASA's Science Mission Directorate. And today I get to talk to you about citizen science at NASA and share some best practices we've learned over the last few years. So, you know, citizen science has been around for more than 100 years. Of course, recently it's blossomed thanks to the internet. NASA has been right there. We funded the Stardust at Home project launched in 2006 uh, by Andrew Westfall and a team from Johnson Space Center. The Stardust at Home asked volunteers to look at images of foils now and also aerogel collected from the Stardust mission, NASA's Stardust mission, and search for tiny grains uh, representing interstellar dust, our actual samples of stuff from beyond the solar system. And it's been tremendously successful uh, found finding the only known examples of material from outside our solar system. Our most recent citizen science project launched just a few weeks ago, the Active Asteroids Project launched August 31st, and is now asking volunteers to help search images of asteroids and look for objects that might be comets masquerading as asteroids. It's really fascinating. Anyway, I hope you'll give those projects a try. And I get to boast some more. We used to say that NASA citizen science projects were doing real science. Now we don't stop at that. We say that NASA citizen science projects dominate multiple scientific fields. They've come to be a crucial tool for accomplishing science. NASA citizen scientists have discovered most of the known comets. There's no qualifier on that sentence. It's not most of the green comets. It's not most of the purple comets. It's most of the known comets, period. As I was saying, NASA citizen scientists have discovered every known sample of interstellar material. They've discovered half of the ultra cool brown dwarfs, also most of the long period extrasolar planets seen by Kepler. NASA citizen scientists have discovered the first extreme T subdwarfs, Zika virus in Peruvian cemetery basins, the oldest white dwarf debridus, the different star phenomenon, the Peter Pan disk phenomenon, the star forming regions called yellow balls, 400,000 Martian seasonal fans, 283,000 emperor penguin nests, 89,000 mosquito breeding sites, seven meteorites, and one new kind of auroral phenomenon named Steve. And I'm always fascinated that several of our biggest discoveries have been surprises. Tabby star and the dipper star phenomenon from the Planet Hunters project, so all those comets. These were things that scientists didn't plan. These are discoveries that citizen scientists either spotted on their own or that a, situations where a project was designed to do one problem and it turned out that it led to some other completely different discovery, it, often in a different field. It's marvelous. All of these projects can be found online at science.nasa.gov slash citizen science. We have 25 active projects online. The ones that have that little symbol of a, of a hug uh, are projects that can be done by anyone anywhere as long as they have a laptop or cell phone. And 13 of those projects are astronomy projects. Something that I think makes NASA Citizen Science special is our policy on citizen science. We have multiple policies now that say all NASA Citizen Science projects shall be designed and implemented to meet the same rigorous standards as any NASA science program. So although you'll hear different definitions of the term citizen science and a lot of debate about the use of the word citizen science, at NASA, it means something very simple. It means excellent science. You're guaranteed that if you do a NASA citizen science project, you're doing something cutting edge, something really important that the science community needs. You are doing real, important, rigorous science every time. 191 NASA citizen scientists have become named co-authors on scientific papers in peer-reviewed journals, thanks to their work on citizen science, something we're very proud of. But let's also talk about education, because NASA citizen science can be a powerful tool for shaping hearts and minds. For example, Michaela Allen and Rebecca Russworm um, left careers in business or in finance to uh, go into science degree programs thanks to their, their uh, work on NASA citizen science. 
we've compiled a collection of resources for educators, classroom materials uh, that can be directly used in the classroom to help students try and get involved in NASA citizen science. Uh, all these materials are available. This document is available in the Dropbox for this event. I wanna make sure that all of you have a copy. We have materials available uh, for uh, all different levels of education up to college. And we have uh, a range of different activities that hopefully will please uh, all sorts of different range of different interests. So here are some tricks that we've learned um, over the last few years working in citizen science and uh, trying to picture citizen science as a learning method. Uh, one of the things that we've learned that citizen science can uniquely communicate, sort of a special niche of citizen science, is teaching people about the process of science. When you get involved in a citizen science project, uh, you will start to wonder, as a citizen scientist, what if I make a mistake? What if I do something wrong? And we reassure people on our citizen science projects that don't worry, we've got mechanisms in place to check your work. We'll have other citizen scientists maybe either do the same uh, task or collect data that goes with your data. We have lots of different ways of combining together data from multiple people to get a robust solid answer. And because that's the essence of science is that it has to be reproducible. When professional scientists work, they always make sure that their work is accessible to others in the scientific community to check, to confirm, or to disprove for that matter. That's part of the essence of what we do. And that message about science, it comes across loud and clear as soon as someone gets involved in a citizen science project. So I encourage you to use citizen science to teach students and to teach any, everybody that part of what makes science trustworthy is that in science, everyone's work is checked and double checked. There's never a situation where a scientific result, a, anything is ever called finished in science until multiple people have verified it and reproduced it. Trick number two. Many of our citizen science projects have video cons or some other regular contact between professional scientists and the citizen scientists. And this is a wonderful opportunity. At these calls, participants can meet the scientists and see how the scientific process goes firsthand. See how scientists work in teams and also competing with each other. Multiple projects here, Stardust at Home, Radio Joe, Planet Patrol, Disk Detective, Backyard Worlds, have uh, video cons or regular phone calls. The way to get into these phone calls is described on the websites, though you may have to read the whole website to find it, okay? So um, a casual user might miss it, but someone who cares enough about the project to read things like the FAQ, to read the whole website, to really participate in it, will generally find the, the ticket to getting involved in these things. And if you can help your students get involved and get into these telecons, it, it's a wonderful opportunity. Trick number three, we all know that a common path into a career in science often starts or involves an internship. NASA has a wonderful intern program at science.nasa.gov slash learners slash learner opportunities. You can see this beautiful map and links to all sorts of different programs that NASA offers. Well, you still have to apply to get into these programs. And guess what? Participating in the citizen science project looks great on an application. It looks great on your resume when you apply for these things. It shows that you have interest, that you really, you had a chance to do NASA science before you did the internship and you took that chance, right? So I recommend that you tell your students that if they want to get an internship, you could help to do some NASA citizen science. Those are my tips. 
please come to science.nasa.gov slash citizen science and try some of our projects and share them far and wide and do some science with us. Thanks very much. <laughs>